to Mars, anywhere. You can enter the house too? Yeah. And see the kitchen and this sort of things? Um, working on that. <laughs> <laughs> working on that. Digitization has become an integral part of our life today, and most of the things that we do revolve around the internet. In all of these digital products, there is one that has now been integrated into every aspect of our lives. The way the world seems to be going, we almost cannot do anything without this digital giant, Google. Almost everything we use daily, Google Search, Gmail, Hangout, Play Store, Google Earth, Maps, cloud computing, and advertisement. The platform was ranked as the most visited in October 2019, with up to 259 million visitors from the United States, a market share of 62.5% among the major search engine providers in the United States. Another research from the Tribunal also found that Google receives more than 63,000 searches per second in a day. This is the average number of people using Google per day, equivalent to at least 2 trillion searches in a year, 3.8 million searches per minute, 228 million searches in an hour, and 5.6 billion searches within a day. These statistics show how Google has become so important and has managed to become part of our lives. However, the question is, are they really what they call themselves? Is Google doing us good or evil? Do we really have privacy using Google? In this video, I will be talking about Google and the CIA and the connections between the two. Therefore, prepare yourself as I take you through a journey through unknown things to the public in the past few years between Google and the CIA. There is no way out. And as Larry Page and Sergey Brin cautiously discovered when they launched Google in 1998, Everything people do on the internet leaves data. When properly stored and used, this data is a goldmine of complete information about people on a personal level, and valuable information about economic and political trends. Google was the first internet company to make the most of this information, and build a business based on the data that people leave behind. But it didn't take long. This has happened almost everywhere, from the smallest app to the largest platform. Amazon. Instagram, Tinder, Facebook, eBay, Uber, Spotify, Lyft, and Twitter. These platforms all leverage people's data, where we go, who we talk to, what we talked about, and who we see. All this information is recorded. When you visit a place that you tell no one about, Google knows about it. They know us well, including what we hide from friends and family. In our modern internet ecosystem, this private surveillance is the norm. Now, can you travel to the south of Minsk? Uh, yeah. Okay. Go to <laughs> Mars. Anywhere. You can yeah. enter the house too? Yeah. And see the kitchen and this sort uh, of things? Um, working on that. <laughs> <laughs> but Google has grown so well, and no one wants to admit the fact that it has also grown worse over the years. However, it is Eric Schmidt became the CEO of Google in 2001. During his tenure as CEO, Google integrated with some power structures in the United States as it morphed into a geographically aggressive mega corporation. But Google has always liked this approach. Also, a long time before Larry Page and Sergey Brin, the founders of Google, hired Schmidt, their initial research on which Google relied was partially funded by the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, DARPA. And even Google under Schmidt has created an image as a very friendly global tech giant. It was secretly building a relationship with the intelligence community. In 2004, Google took over Keyhole, a mapping technology startup funded by the National Geospatial Agency, NGA, and the CIA. It was developed into Google Maps. The enterprise version of the keyhole has even been shopped to the Pentagon and associated agencies under multi-million dollar contracts. These should raise a question on our minds whether there is a relationship between the CIA and the tech giant. 
However, there have been many claims from Google that it was never funded or created by the Central Intelligence Agency. For example, when a story was circulating in 2006 about Google receiving funds from the intelligence community in the past years to help fight terrorism, the company told John Battelle, founder of Wired Magazine, that the statements related to Google are completely untrue. The big question now is, did the CIA fund Bryn and Page's research and thus create Google? No. But were they researching exactly what the NSA, CIA, and the intelligence was hoping for? Absolutely. Bryn's breakthrough research on page ranking by tracking user queries and linking them to the many searches conducted, essentially identifying birds of a feather, was largely the aim of the intelligence community's MDDS program. And Google succeeded beyond their wildest dreams. To understand this, you need to think about what the intelligence community was trying to achieve by providing grants to the best in academia. The CIA and NSA funded an unclassified, diverse, but elaborate program from the beginning to encourage the development of something that is almost like Google. The investment arms of the Central Intelligence Agency and Google support a company that monitors the internet in real time and reported it uses the information to predict the future. This seems to be the first time that the intelligence community and Google are funding the same startup at the same time. No one accuses Google of cooperating directly with the CIA, but the investment is bound to feed Google's critics, who see the search giant as already very friendly with the United States government and fear that the company is starting to forget its mantra. Don't be evil.